It's a heart issue. Right. And so I begin to ask God, okay, what, what about our heart? How can, I, what, how can we position ourselves to tap into our purpose, right? And uh, it's funny, got the letter of the ball, R A W, right? right? Repentance and worship. Wow. Wow, yep. So right. having a heart of repentance. Yes. Uh, I, I looked up with repentance, of course, y'all know I did. So repentance, yeah, repentance is not just, oh, I'm sorry, and I'm sorry because I got caught or something. Right. Repentance is, I changed my mind. Go, turn around, go the other way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Change your mind. That's right. Make, make an about face, go the other direction. And so it's more than just, oh, I'm sorry, I got caught. Right. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's like a, a wailing, like I disappointed God. Like it's, it, you should be hurt, God, for believing yes. the Holy right. Spirit, right? Yes. right? So you change and go the other way. That's repentance. Yes. And worship, um, the simple definition that they gave for worship was adoration and reverence. So we need to have a repentant heart and then enter into adoration and reverence, yes. right? Yes. And that. I believe is the foundation for positioning yourself at least so that he can begin to show you your purpose, yeah. which that's what you should expect. Don't, don't do your own thing. It's funny, we make our own plans. Like in New Year's, yeah. you start making New Year's resolutions yeah. and right. things like that. Right. Yeah. And make your own plans. But um, I believe it's Proverbs 19 and 21. And it says, many are the plans of a man, yes. but God's purpose will prevail. Yes. So that is what you should expect. God's purpose to prevail in your life. And so begin to position yourself and position your heart so that you can receive whatever his purpose is. Amen. Alright? Okay. That's all, y'all. Amen? Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. I know 
know y'all just came out of worship, but if you could just begin to worship God again, we want to just begin to worship yes. Him and create a, a, a atmosphere where God can be in this atmosphere for the pastor. Amen. So I want to just begin to say hallelujah Jesus. You're worthy to be praised. We glorify you this morning. We magnify you Father God. We welcome you Holy Spirit to have your way in this house tonight God. Have your way. Move like never before in the name of Jesus Father God. Come and create in us a clean heart. Renew a right spirit as the songwriter said. As your words say God. We just want to have a new heart God. We want to have a heart of flesh, God. Oh, God, we want you to touch us from the top of our head to the sole of our feet, Father God. Ignite our fire in here today, God. In the name of Jesus, oh, God, allow us to thirst after righteousness today, Father God. We want to be holy as you are holy, Father God. So we surrender ourselves to you, oh, God. Have your way, Father God. Have your way in this house, God. Have your way like never before, Father God. We surrender ourselves unto you, God. Jesus. Oh God, dispatch your angels all throughout this house, yes, God. No. In the name of Jesus. Not just here, but God, go, oh God, to the house of the people under the sound of my voice, Father God. You know every need, oh God. You know every prayer request, God. You have received the prayer petition, yes. God. Oh God, we thank you right now for in front of your ears, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for looking upon us, God. Oh God, we thank you for watching over us as we slept in slumber, God. Many did not get a chance to see your mercy again. Mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We 
ask all these things in your precious son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen, 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 amen. amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm. And wherever you at right now, if you if you can just have a repentant heart. So I repent in the name of Jesus. The enemy would like to keep you in a place where you don't repent and don't remember, but repent in the name of Jesus so no prayer can be hindered in the name of Jesus. And every imp and every demonic demon, dark spirit that's trying to come up, hallelujah, we, we come against you now with the power of the Holy Ghost and fire be upon you now. You must die now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So we're going to be moving along with this service. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you to each and every one of you guys that's watching our live. Each and every one of you that's in the building. We just thank you. Um, now we're going to go into um, our offering. Um, yep. So we're going to change and go into our offering. Amen. As uh, Sister Anika come up. Um, bear with us and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes, thank you, Jesus. How many know we're going to stay in the same atmosphere? How many know this is all part of worship? Amen. 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 And right now we're getting ready to pick up our offering. If you are lying and you would like to be a part of this moment where we worship the Lord also in our giving. Um, hallelujah. Um, you can give to um, Church in the Raw on Cash App. Amen. As each person prepared to give this morning, 2 Corinthians 9, 7 says, Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart. Before I came here this morning, I already knew what I wanted to give. Amen? Amen. It says, not reluctantly or under compulsion. Amen? Amen. 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 <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. So, in other words, what I'm giving this morning, I am giving freely. No one is forcing me to give or trying to bring out a whole bunch of scriptures or manipulate me into giving. No, I already made up in my mind and in my heart that I want to give and I'm going to give joyfully. Amen. Amen. He said, for God loves a cheerful giver. Hallelujah. I know when somebody gave to me, like this morning, I got blessed with a watch. I was like, what? So like, yep, yeah, this is for all the seed that you sown. I was like, thank you, Jesus. Amen. So how many know when we give to God, give cheerfully. Amen. Just like you receive cheerfully, give cheerfully. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So I'm going to pray as you guys pass the basket along. Amen. Oh, the music. Glory to God. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. As you guys uh, pass the basket along. Yes. Thank you. Amen. So right now we're going to pray for the offering as you stand here. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you right now, God. We thank you, Father God, for your faithfulness towards us, your faithfulness towards this ministry church in the world, God. And God, we just ask that you multiply, God, each and every finances that come in, Father God. God, that this, this ministry, God, will be blessed and will be used, God, for your honor and for your glory, Father God. Each finances come in, God, that it will be taken out there into the world, God, to preach the gospel, God, to provide for those that don't have, Father God, for themselves, God. So we just thank you, and even for each person that is online that is given today, Father God. I pray, God, that you will multiply it, Father God, that you will bring finances into the bosom. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen and amen. amen. It's offering time. Hey. I say, ah. Hey. 
Come on. It's offering time. It's offering time. Yes, come on. That's it, come on. Hey, hey. It's offering time. right now we have a, a special dance our sister um, Connie is coming up amen right now and so we're gonna uh, turn it over to her
Jesus. Woo! Oh, yeah. What's up? Come on now, put your hands together. Give God some praise in the house. Amen. She had some moves. Amen. Right now we're getting ready to introduce to you our drama team, Raw Expression. Put your hands together for Raw Amen. Expression. Amen. Some church service was today, girl. Yeah. Oh God, you had to see God. How did you lose me? Oh my goodness! You had to see the people falling out and all that, girl. Every time I opened up my mouth, oh my God, people were just falling out all over the place. I'm telling you, girl, God, oh, that power is working in me, girl. You have no idea. Yeah. I'll be in church the next week. All right, because you keep saying you're coming and you're, you're not here. But I hear my mother all the way outside. Mm. I'm great going here, so. Uh, I'll I'll wait back. This all right. I'll wait this I'll call you back. Man, I'll come this way. There she is. There she is. Then. There's my mom. Then. Oh, I got to go. Your mama's here, baby. And what? What's wrong with you? She's not like that. What's wrong? I put lipstick on for you and everything, baby. Huh? What you doing? What do you mean what I'm doing? I came over here to get the money. You said you were going to have me. You've been paying the bills, but I, I mean, I need some bills other than my bills, baby. Oh my God. 
same thing she's getting right here. And then what do you go to the church and offer them? What do you do? What do you say to them? And why do you speak so differently when you come home? I know she come around here asking for money. I know she does. She have her hand hanging. I up. gotta laugh. You know why I, I have to laugh? Cause I'm she's a joke. She's a joke. She's a joke. But just maybe, just maybe, maybe it's not about the money. Maybe she come around here. I'm so angry right now. To see I'm what really, she can get. Okay. I understand uh, angry, but maybe she just want to see her daughter. Yeah, maybe she wants something different from her daughter. Right, 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 right. When you go to God, how often do you go to God? How often? Every day? And when you go to God, does he stand there and go, what do you want now? Oh, I gave that to you yesterday. Oh, why do you, you want more? You want more from me? You think I should give it to you? Does he do that? Or is he, or is he leaning with you? Maybe it's not about the money. Maybe she just want to be received by you. Maybe she just, if you just embrace her once, the way God embraces you, he don't stand there and receive you with his arms crossed. He receives you with open arms. This is Sam. This is your mother. I don't care if she crawled in here on her hands and knees. If somebody crawled in the church on her hands and knees, would you keep them like that? Would you make them knock, ring the doorbell? Yes. 
to receive your chastening, to receive direction by your revelation, to receive the gifts of the Spirit, to receive and embrace the brothers and sisters that you have provided for them as a family. Glory to your name, we lift you up because we are still here. We could be gone. We could be cast away like the song was saying. The worst feeling in the world is to feel that you are separated from God. That he has cast you away. Today I don't stand here with the fluff. Don't. Because the love of God for you, the God that is coming hardcore right now with correction to the body, I stand as a prophetess right now. For God to think through my mind and to speak through my mouth. I let my guard down of the flesh that would want any attention or that would want to please man or that would want any glory to myself. Yes. I disarm this flesh by the power and might of the Holy Spirit. And I pray, Father, that every word that proceeded out of my mouth will be assisted by your spirit. That I completely be decreased as you are increased through me right now in the name of Jesus. And I also thank you for preparing the heart, the mind, and the soul to receive what you have to say. Not what I have to say, but what you have to say. In these times, It is detrimental that we are listening and watching to ourselves. It's one thing to, to, to hear God, but see, if we're not aware of what is coming out of our own mouth or our own actions. If we're not aware of how the enemy ties this, this string around us to, to lure us away by his deceptive schemes according to what abides within us. If we don't understand that it's there or if we don't understand that we are behaving in such a way we will not hear God's voice the way we need to hear God's voice. Yep, these stand calls. Today, God is going to deal with us in such a way. I really pray that you guys really receive what was happening or you got the message what was happening in this skit today because there are people not just people I would say there are believers that are behaving in such a way not just believers but I'm saying people that walk in a fivefold ministry that are behaving in such a way that is detestable to God Today, God is going to deal with us in a place where awareness, awareness 
has to be our objective to hear the sound, hear the wave in the atmosphere, hear it in the spirit that God is crying out for you. He is calling each and every last one of us that is in the body right now to come to the place of submission to him. He's dealing with us in a place that governs our whole entire body. Our whole being. Something that he sees. That he reviews. That he tests. That he judges. And that is the heart. The Lord is dealing with us concerning our heart and repentance today. I never have realized how flawed we could be or how flawed we really are and how deceived that we really are believing that we are in the right standing of God. We are some emotional creatures. And we, most of the time, are governed by the emotions. And this is problematic for God because God has work to do on this earth, just like Satan is doing on this earth. Yes. But see, if we're not in position, we can't do the bidding of God effectively. And today we're going to learn some things. We're going to, I'm going to, um, more so is more of a teaching today. God is speaking through his word today. Okay. So there are scriptures here that's going to completely back me up. And to what I'm saying, why am I saying this? Why does this seem like a message of doom and gloom? No, it's not. It's a message of saying, I love you. I just know that I love. And I got to let you know that wherever you are, Whatever has been going on that made you not be able to hear me effectively, you've got to look and measure yourself yes. to see if you are in the faith. We don't measure ourselves the way we need to measure ourselves on a daily basis. So in dealing with the heart, hmm, let me just describe what the heart, what God how he sees the heart. The heart is the ruling center of the whole person. The spring of all desires. That is where all the emotions are, all the reasonings are, all the decisions are. The heart is seen at the seat of the will. It is the seat of the will of the person. Yes. Not only spiritually, but of all the operations of the human life. I want to explain real quickly and go to you because I want you, we need to understand how and why it is so important right now that we get the heart right. Yes. The heart is going to determine everything where we go as we transition. Amen? Amen. So, but we want, don't want to be alarmed or worried about that because we want to be able to enjoy the life and receive the benefits that God has promised us on this earth. So this is the purpose of his chastening to the body right now because look around you. I see more complaining saints than anything. All we're doing is complaining on the sideline and getting no results. <coughs> Effective results. And we talk about the land. You know, I, 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 I'm in prayer with people and, and I always tend to hear people and, and not even just, 
in prayer, but through social media and other places where we're telling God, take this away. Take this corona away. Take this pain away. Yes. Take my circumstance away. Anything that doesn't look right or doesn't feel good or that we see that is that we deem as harmful. To, we want God to take it away. But see, God set things in order. Yes. And there is a right way that God has demonstrated in his word. <laughs> I'm telling you, as I learn. I listen to God and, you know, the things that we ask for, God makes reference to the pagans do that. Because he sets standards in motion yes. for us as the body, which the enemy makes to seem so hard. Yes. But yet it is so easy. It really is easy. But we, we got to understand who we up against and wrestling against. And, and, and we need not say the enemy, but the inner me. We're wrestling against our hearts. What's in there? Who's talking? Who's governing? Who's really having dominion? Ezekiel. This is God's plan when it comes to the heart. And I would give them, Ezekiel eleven nineteen says, and I would give them one heart and a new spirit I will put within them. I will remove the heart of stone from their flesh and give them a heart of flesh. So you want to know what the heart of flesh, what is the stony heart, okay? He want to remove this heart of stone. This heart of stone right here is made in reference to 1 Samuel 25, 37. But in the morning when the wine had gone out of Nabal, his wife told him these things and his heart died within him so that he became as a stone. It makes reference to dying. A stony heart on your way to death, on your way to destruction. The term put my spirit within you occurs in Ezekiel 36, 27 and 37, 14. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statues and you will be careful to observe my ordinances. So we know he's talking about life right here. When God says, I will put my spirit in you. So he's causing life to come here and giving you the ability to be able to obey or submit. Ezekiel 37, 14, and I will put my spirit within you and you will come to life. So if he has to put a spirit in you, there's got to be a stage where there's some death going on right here. Because he has to put his spirit in you. So before he put his spirit in you, you were dead. Yes. On your way to eternal damnation. And I will place you on, the, on your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and done it, declares the Lord. We're dealing with the heart right now before we get to the part of the repentance. And I'm telling you, I'm going to share this, you know, um, extraordinary situations with you because I know so many of us can relate to this. And God right now, I mean, he is so serious. You know, we really take for granted the grace. Yes. We take for granted his grace. And I was one who took for granted God's grace. Even knowing how I was behaving. Because if you confess, Romans 10, 9. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart. What is the heart? The heart and your mind are one. When he's looking at your heart, he's looking also at your mind. He's seeing and he's testing the thoughts. What's coming in there? Because whatever's coming in there 
if you allow it to stay there, it's going to manifest in the natural. So we got to know that. We got to know whatever we're entertaining in our mind is going to eventually come out. If it's in the matter of the heart. When we get to the stage where the heart bears witness to what we are thinking, it tells the brain what to do and the body behaves to what the brain is commissioning it to do. So it is important what you think. People say, oh, well, it's not sinful to think this. It's not sinful to think that. But if, if it didn't matter, God wouldn't say that I judge your thoughts. He wouldn't have said that his Holy Spirit is the discerner of thoughts. There's a process. There's a process to you becoming in bondage or enslaved to what's in you. We can't even say you're enslaved to Satan. You're enslaved to the lust that is already there. And God makes that very clear. God explains what the heart is like to him. In Jeremiah 17, 9, he says, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, search the heart and test the mind to give every man according to his ways according to the fruit of his deeds. So we don't think that it matters what we're thinking. We don't think that it matters what we are pondering on. We don't think that it matters what we are watching that gets into our mind. I'm going somewhere with this. So I'm asking, please be patient with me with this. Every way of a man is right in his own eyes. Proverbs 21.2. But the Lord weighs the heart. How many of us think even if something was wrongfully done that we are right and justified to behave in such a way because we feel they deserve it. How many of us do that? How many of us feel that we have the, the right to behave a certain way because we think that somebody needs to pay the price. How many of us take these matters in our own hands and then try to justify it, getting people to come in agreement with you to validate the wickedness that is in the flesh that wants to keep you there and separate you from God and yet you don't even realize that you are your own enemy that is keeping you from God. But yet, we want to point the finger. We point the finger and I'm telling you. This is the place I was just in. Not long ago. Not even realizing the danger that I put myself in. Matthew 15, 18, 20 says, But what comes out of a mouth proceeds from the heart. And this defiles the person. For out of the heart comes evil thoughts, comes the murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false witness, slander. Jesus. These are what defile a person. But to eat with what unwashed hands does not defile. That's Let's, let's go, let's dig in there real fast. Let's, let's just dig in there real fast. He's talking about what comes out of the mouth. In order for something to come out of the mouth, it has to be in the thoughts. You have to think about it first. You know what you're going to say. Whether we're scheming to go meet somebody, we know we have nobody meeting. Whether we're scheming or slandering, uh, and I'm going to share this, you know, this awesome testimony because I have to share it because, like I said, a lot of us can relate to being in this level uh, of in your emotions. Uh, and I'm 
you're surrounded by people. Let me just share this. Someone can, you know, do something that can be very harmful. I mean, or, or you think that it's harmful to you or very hurtful because, you know, you love them or really care about them. You know, and it kind of really hurt you, whether it's been done in a church, whether it's been done through a, a, a partner, right. a loved one, some family member, like the skit was showing how I was treating my own mother. I was so angry. Hmm. See, and we got to understand sometimes, sometimes we're looking at a person and it, it hasn't even been there, but it goes back to way many, many years prior to you coming in contact with this person who done something to you. So now they done added the icing on the cake. So now all you see is this person to blame for everything that you know, whatever they done. And the enemy comes now because you have come into agreement with the enemy. So now you're only able to see the delusion or illusion that the enemy wants you to see because you're no longer in spirit. You're not thinking nothing about God right now. All you can do is your focal point is on that one. Help us. Help us. Help us. This one or this thing. He magnifies this. Let me tell y'all, it is not that deep. And I had to learn this a hard way. It's not that deep. Nothing is deep enough to cause separation between you and God. Nobody or nothing is that deep. So what I did as pastor. Come on, pastor. Help us, Holy Ghost. Help us, Holy Ghost. We have a clever way of covering up. Because sometimes when good things start to happen to you. You take your eye off of what is going on or whatever. So now it becomes covered up. You don't bury this thing. But this thing is festering and festering. Yeah. And it's getting yeah. bigger yeah. under yeah. Yeah. and behind yeah. the scene of your heart. And you don't realize mm. that as you're holding on to something, <coughs> trying to act like it's not there, your heart becomes colder mm. and colder. And you can't see in the spirit, so you don't understand or you don't realize what's going on in the spirit. And you don't understand even why you behave in this way. Because me as a pastor, I know. Forget the title pastor. I know. Because I'm mature enough in the Lord to know the difference or to discern when my spirit is out of order. See, but there's something that happens in your heart where you got to get to the point where you're crying out to God because now you're saying, okay, God, I see my actions. I know I'm being cold. I know I'm feeling some type of way. I know I'm going to this person to talk about what they're doing so they can agree with me. Yes. And now this person is not even around to fend for themselves. So now I'm, I'm, I'm stepped into slandering now. And when what happens, it will cause somebody else that truly loves you to feel some type of way. See, this is why God hates slandering. This is why he hates the gossiping. This is why he hates the finger pointing. He hates the judging. Because it does not just affect you. It can affect your children. It can affect all the people around you. It can affect your ministry. It can affect everything that's attached to you. So now you don't cause the whole other person to feel some type of way. You don't cause them to get bitterness in their heart, resentment in their heart. Yes. Now you don't cause them to also gossip, slander, backbite. Because of our selfishness to keep our eyes on ourselves. Not even realizing the enemy behind the scene is having a part. Oh, and and, and while, while your focus is over here, and our focus over here, and God and the Holy Spirit is over here, here goes Satan and his demons over there, destroying my family, operating through my children, operating through the spouse, operating through whoever's attached to me. He's causing havoc. He's wrecking things on this side because I done shifted my focus over here. I got distracted over here and pointing the finger at what is not even doing 
someone the damage to me. See, and God showed me and he had to deal with me because, you know, it's been years of hurt being in different relationships. You tend to hold on and bury things and sometimes you don't even realize it's there. You think that you have forgiven a person because you're living the life. You're feeling good. You're looking good. You're living good. You're doing all the things and God, you're blessing me. Oh my God, you're blessing me. But see, behind the scenes, the second somebody do something to you, and you can tell by the fruit, because as soon as somebody says something that doesn't agree with you, you get defensive. We get defensive, and our guards go up, and we got to feel like we got to defend ourselves. See, when you when your guard goes up every time, you know that you have seeds there of that needs to be healed. That is the fruit of Satan's strategy that has twisted and that has been infiltrating the thing that is in your heart. This is why it is important that we have to grow up in the Lord. We have to be in the Spirit because He's always on His job. But we so bound and we're so governed by our emotions. God, He has said to guard hearts with all diligence yes. to guard it why because he knows God knows if uh, we allow that offense to come in oh my God it's going to shift our focus over yes. there to the person and then God now his law has to deal with me see it ain't God that's doing something to you there's a law written in this thing there are consequences that comes with our decisions yes. Yes. to behave in such a way yes. that will cause God ear to be turned away from us. We are the ones that create a barrier. Not just through being mad and upset and bitter and angry. Frustrated. I know more believers that deal with the issue of anger than yes. anything. Yes. We deal with this issue of anger and I'm telling you I was one of them. I'm telling you I hear so many believers and you know and, and we make fun but it's not funny. We brag about how we can go from zero to a thousand, just like that. Yeah. And most of us can. Yeah. And that's not funny. It is, it is us completely in the flesh. And none of that bring God glory. None of it. And we are just, we don't even understand. Like why? God, we know God called us to do stuff. And you know, and we don't understand why this anointing ain't doing what it's supposed to do. And I'm going to say something to you. I'm going to show you something that's going to blow your mind. Towards the end, when, when God had to deal with, when he said about his people, um, that's going to come to him to say, Lord, Lord, I did this. Oh, wait till I share that. Oh, the Holy Spirit gave me a revelation about that. So we have to be careful what our mind is telling us to do. Because when we allow our minds to go into a place that is unfamiliar territory that God has delivered us from, when we go to back to revisit that place, oh, there are so many different things that come with it. Yeah. You're not just dealing with this one little thing. You, oh, trust me, it comes with, in a group. They come in groupings. So you find yourself doing all kinds of things, thinking all kinds of things. You call, you find yourself scheming. Oh, who I can call? Let me entertain, oh, this is just innocent. I'm just going to call and entertain this person, you know, for a while. I'm just going to go out, you know. You know, knowing my spouse is at home, I'm just going to go and call this person, you know. Uh, it's, it's, it's innocent. You know, you make the phone call. Hey, 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 no, 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 no. How you doing? This is innocent. You start entertaining them. That's you. you you're making your date now to go out on an innocent date. Oh, y'all just talking. Y'all doing all that other stuff. Next thing you know, your eyeballs is looking some type of way, you know. They're yeah. going to move. And then, you know, you set yourself up to make something happen right Probably in a car. Yeah, but see, this is because we shift our focus on things of the flesh where God is trying to deliver us from. He knows the enticement has everything to everything that is in our heart. He said you're lured away by lust in your heart. Right. We're going away. So I call myself being angry. And I'm angry. I go to my friends. I'm telling you. Yes. And guess what? There may be some truth in what you're saying. Right. It may be very well. But see, God requires us to behave in such a way yes. that he can yes. step in. Yes. See, when he steps in, he does it in such a classy yes. way. Yes. 
when he deals with somebody's heart, he does it such a But see, when we don't want to listen, now I don't have prophet, prophetic word here, prophetic word come here, you know, and in my flesh, you know, all I can see is what Satan wanted me to see, literally. And all I can talk about was that. Yeah. But they did this, they did that, they did this, they did that. And that's all, and, and, I, and I mean, I'm talking to apostles, I'm talking to pastors, I'm talking right. to people, the <laughs> men and women of God. Of God. And I, I, I'm trying, and I'm very persuasive. I can be. But see, that's why you got to be strong in your spot. I don't care who yeah. you are. You got to be strong in your spot, in the spirit, and you got to put yourself around people that is not going to be but manipulated by your emotions right. or by the love that you're using. To lure them into agreement with you. Mm. Jesus. You even get people, believers, stone cold believers, that will actually even come into agreement with you, even going on this date with somebody. Yeah. Not me. No. Hey, I, I'm not surrounded by none of them. I'm not. No, I ain't even gonna try. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. But what's so, what's so awesome about it is, okay, so since we're dealing with the heart, so he pointed out the different lusts that are in our hearts, okay? Yeah. In a way how we can be enticed and lured away. Greed, pride, fornication, yeah. adultery, you know, yeah. all that stuff. Anger. I mean, just something so simple as anger. And then we go and we start getting on social media and ministering. <laughs> but see, the difference is, and then we're gonna, I'm gonna jump down to the to the minister's side of things. <laughs> but see, me as a minister, me, I know the word said it 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 would be uh, better for you not to teach. It, it, it'll be better for most of you not to teach I'm telling you because you're going to be dealt with more strictly you're going to be judged more harsh yes. and see because I know that I know that word and because I actually really do love God I ask God to deal with me I ask him to do it but see God is looking for the heart in you that is willing for him to deal with you where you are. Because there's a lot of reasons that will cause him to hide his face. It's not just being mad at somebody, but I'm using myself as an example because this is what actually really happened. But let me tell you how good God is because he's always looking at the heart and why you do what you do. Not what you do, but why you do what you do. So he's looking for the seeds. There's seeds in your heart. And he can see it. See, because sin testifies against you. If it's there, it testifies against you. So he can see in the spirit. We can't hide nothing that's in there. Nothing that's in our thoughts. We can't hide it. And if we want, we all want to be strong in the Lord. We want to be used by God. We want to walk with signs and wonders and, you know, and be able to tell people and show people, look how powerful I am and what lives in me and what I'm able to do in the Lord. And look how he's blessing me with this and with that and all that. And we swear up and down that we are evil. That God is with us. He's talking through us. Man, we saying so much that God is not saying. So with that being said, I was angry. I was angry and I was upset. You know, and I just couldn't see the good. And I'm asking God, show me. But see, it's so crazy because that tug of war thing is real. That tug of war and that flesh, no matter what you're dealing with, I don't care what you're dealing with, if it was addictions, if it was just, just anger, you, you're treating your kids some type of way, or somebody else, whatever. But I, Marnie, I know I'm in my flesh, and I'm telling myself, my God, I know what I'm doing, and I'm hurting this person, but because I'm in the flesh and the enemy doesn't care about none of us, I adopted the attribute of the enemy. I didn't care. My heart started getting cold, and I said, my Lord Jesus, I'm in a place where I know I can't go up on that pulpit. I can't go and spoon this vomit out on people. I can't do that. I need you to deliver me quickly. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I 
need you to come for me, God. I need you to come for me because I know I'm out of order. I'm feeling like this. I know when I come up and against them and, 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 and my, my flesh starts acting some type of way when I come around that person. Or, or, or then I get around somebody else and I'm all happy-go-lucky and I'm all this and this and the smiles is on my face. But yet this person is hurting because they know they was remorseful. They were sorry. Whether they was remorseful or sorry or not, we are responsible for how we treat them. And let me tell you, I went into my prayer closet and I had to go cry out. And not only was I crying out, but I had a whole army around me of friends and sisters and brothers and cry. Hey, what I'm saying? Mama in love, Papa in love. Let me tell you something. Listen, I got jumped in the spirit. This is what God will provide for you when he knows your heart. Yes. When he knows there are seeds of forgiveness or yes. repentance in you. He will provide people that you don't even know to be praying and interceding yes. for you. Yes. He's looking for those that still have that mustard seed. Even that mustard seed of faith to still say, God. I can't stand who I'm with now. I fell out of love with them. I don't love them no more. I'm not attracted to them. Lord, I want a divorce. Oh, there's a whole lot in the body of Christ going yeah. through that. Yeah, right there. Lost your affection for one another. Lost that zeal for one another. Lost that respect for one another. <clears throat> And we're going into the prayer closet, going against the will of God, saying, God, I want a divorce, and you don't have no grounds for it. <laughs> but you, you, you think you're going to take matters into your own hands. See, where I was, you know, I'm saying to the Lord, you know, so this is why he said, many of the plans in the man's heart. But see, my, my will, my will is going to prevail. Okay? But see, there's a lot of people also that God spoke over that is in the grave wishing. Yes. Wishing they would have listened. God would prophesy to you what would happen. See, we still have free will. He would tell you what, you know, this is what you want to do, this is, this is what you're called to do, and all that other stuff. But see, if you don't cooperate, right. if you don't answer, if you don't submit, what do you think going to happen? Right. What do you think going to happen? So I decided, I said, God, I'm hearing from this person, and I caused all of this. You know, and I had to repent. I said, God, I, I caused all of this. I need you, I, please, Lord, I need you to come for me. I really do. I need you to please deal with my heart. I need you to soften my heart, God, because I'm acting in a way that I don't really want to act like that. And I found myself, you know, uh, uh, reflecting back to what Paul was saying. You know, he was doing the things that he didn't find himself, he didn't want to do. He knew the right thing to do, but yeah, he kept finding his stuff. So then he knew the law was at work in him. It was sin that was doing it. Though he knew what he was doing. So I had to take responsibility and accountability and see myself. See, one of the hardest things for you to be able to see is yourself. Is to see the, the flaw in yourself. Because you have made yourself look so good in some type of way in front of everybody. That you don't want nobody to see your little imperfections. But see, the enemy sees it and God sees it. And I'm telling you right now, you better recognize and take accountability for it. And just just repent. I just agree with God concerning that. And that's what I had to do. So I went before God praying in my prayer closet. And then God was able to deal with the people also around me. And they're all praying for me even though my flesh didn't like it. And my flesh didn't want to talk to nobody who was really not going to agree with me. <laughs> and then God called the separation. And then so now he had to get me in my own space. I was left alone. And in that space, now God was able to deal with me. He started to show me and said, see, this is why I say, you wrestle not against the flesh and blood, but against the principalities, powers, rulers, of darkness in the world, the spiritual wickedness and hopping. See, you're wrestling against that spirit that entices. See, you're not even, you're, you're not even feeling like that or acting like that because of what that person did. You're not doing it. You're acting like that because that thing is in you. So when you go to point the finger, the finger is always pointed back at yourself. That's why God said, don't judge. It's always pointed back at ourselves. So it was, I'm looking at myself like it was me. 
Like, I'm so I'm behaving like this because of me. Oh, because oh, because the spirit comes in and can't make you do nothing. But it comes to entice what's already there. So in order for me to get offended, that spirit of offense had to already be in me. I had to, my spirit had to be like this arm. I wasn't in the spirit, I was in the flesh. And so I was able to be enticed because I was not built up in the spirit in this word concerning our situation. I decided in this part of my life, I don't need the word for that part. I don't, I don't, I don't need it for that part. I don't need it for that part. But I'm strong and disciplined and all this other stuff over here. And I have to avoid. But see, we don't understand. This one part, this follows all of this my other stuff. So you be doing good in all these areas over here. You do good in all these other areas over here. But see, when this part right here, out of the alignment of God, it defiles the whole entire body. It defiles everything about you. And you swear up and down that you're in the will of God. God is listening to you. And you are doing signs and wonders. You're doing stuff and all whatever. But God had to show me. So he raised up. As I went to a service, I went into a service, and in the service, you know, the pastors, uh, the apostle, he's, he's, he's teaching and all of that. And, you know, the day before I found myself in the Word, I opened the Word, and I'm reading, reading, and I see, oh my God, he's talking about judging. So now I get convicted, I start to repent, I'm saying, oh my God, God, forgive me. This and now the Word is doing what it's doing. It's sharpening any two edged sword. Yeah. <laughs> Now it's going, it's dividing the soul and the spirit because it knows now my spirit, my spirit, my soul is submitting to the spirit. That, that word that comes to sharp, to be sharp in you, to destroy, to divide the spirit and the soul. It came in there and it started doing that. So conviction start raising up and I start to repent. And then now I got to go into service. I go into service and God said, I, I, we ain't finished yet. I got a completed work I need to finish in you. So he takes me into the service and now I'm listening to the awesome word that was coming forth. And after that, I go and I talk to another guy who did not know anything about me. But see, this is how good God is because I told God. I said, I don't want to hear anything from another person that know anything that's going on for me. You want to talk to me? I need you to talk to me. I need you to talk to me directly or I need you to talk to somebody that doesn't know absolutely nothing. God raised him up. God heard me because he heard my heart. No matter how I came before the Lord, he wouldn't worry about that, but I was coming. That's all he was concerned about. I came. Yes, yes, yes. And he answered me because I was praying according to his will. I was now humbling myself. See, to humble yourself means you're saying that, God, I, 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 I need you. Okay, I'm going to get out my own way thinking I can handle things or do things on my own. Now, I'm turning it over to you, God, because you are the judge. You are the God that will see me through this, that has, that has complete control over this if I give it to you. So now here comes an apostle. Uh, ooh, ooh, I call him Moses. He looks, he, he looks like a Moses. <laughs> he got the white hair and the beard and, you know. And I say, uh, you know, I'm nice, you know, inviting him to come to this ministry, you know, and to, to, to bring forth a word, him and his wife. And, you know, he nicely, he's looking at me like with this, this look on his face, but real just like, mm, in my face, like, mm. That, I see the sternness in his eyes. I was like, mm, I know it's, it's something's coming. I know something's coming. Something, I'm discerning the spirit. Like, he going to say something. But let me tell you, the man started talking, and he was just talking about uh, the ministry. And it transitioned, and I had to discern what was, what was happening here because now I'm hearing key words that I looked at was pricking me. Yeah. Things that he started saying was like, oh, dealing with me. And he knew it, and he says, you're being dealt with right now. You're being dealt with right now. He said, see, but when you deal in the flesh, he said, you love God. You love God. You love God. You want to do the right thing by God. You want to do the right thing. You don't want to offend God. He said, but there's something that when you're dealing in the flesh, you've been having desires to hear from God, and you've been trying to make decisions that you can't make because you're deeply in the flesh. You've been operating in the flesh, and you would never be able to hear from God while you are in your flesh. Now listen, I'm hearing them. I said, oh, so you're prophesying to me. Yes, I am. Yes. So uh, he has my full and complete attention. But I'm being broken as he's talking to me because the word is true. It is sharper than any 
need to add your sword. And if you genuinely love God, you will not grow bitter, not cold. You will not be resentful. None of that at the chastening or correction of God. You will rejoice because you know the scripture also says, a chasten those that what? That I love. So all I can see while this man is coming at me so hard, I mean, he was cutting me to pieces. And all I can do is just sit there and look at him and be cut up and be thankful in my heart because I'm like, he loves me. That's all I could see. I chose not to look at the enemy because right then and there, the enemy wanted me to feel some type of way. But I chose to, uh, I've been waiting for this deliverance. I'm not going to let nothing stop this. Yes. The enemy tried to stop it. He tried to stop this deliverance process. And then I cried out. He was getting ready to, um, to, to leave or what have you. And then, you know, I had to cry out and to say, no! I was desperate. And I mean, when you are in a desperate situation and when you need desperate results from God, I'm telling you, you don't care who's around. You don't care. Who's looking at you? You don't care what people are going to think. You're going to cry out to God and you're going to say, God, I surrender. Deliver me. So I cried out that very moment. My sister um, Anika was there. She bears witness to what I am saying. And I cried out. I said, no, you're interrupting the flow the, of the spirit. Like I, yeah, He's ministering to me. So the process had to continue. So now he lays hands on me, and I'm t let me tell you about a deliverance. I mean, I felt all that. Can nobody tell me that God doesn't? He literally took the heart of stone, and I'm telling, I was on my way. And here is a scripture to show you who, my God. It says, "Do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion on the day of testing, as in the wilderness." Do not harden your hearts because you know when people get corrected, you get an attitude. People get attitudes. Right. Oh, well, I ain't gonna serve God. I ain't gonna do nothing. I ain't, I ain't gonna do my destiny. I ain't, I ain't singing. I ain't dancing. I ain't preaching. I ain't doing none of this. I'll forget all that as though you hurting God. this people's heart has grown dull. This is Acts 28, 27. And with their eyes, they can barely hear. I mean, and with their ears, they can barely hear. And their eyes, they have closed. Lest they should see their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart in turn. I would heal and I would heal them. My hearing was becoming dull. My eyes were becoming blind. The more I went accusing, the more I went slandering, the more I went complaining, the more I went to God saying, get me up one out of here. Show me the, I'm telling you, the more dull all my senses became. And I knew it. I knew it. I just didn't know how to get out of it. So I had to cry out to God. And God came for me in such a way... Because there is nothing. I felt like the church, one of the churches, the seven churches that God was talking to, I see you doing all this good stuff. I see you doing this. I see you doing that. But yet I have one thing against you. And that one thing could have eternally separated me from God had I stayed on that lane. We have to choose to deal with what we know what we're struggling with. Come to the place where no matter how hard it is to tell your flesh, I got to stop this. I got to get out of this position. I've been struggling with this for too long. But see, surrendering is exactly what it says. It is surrendering. It is surrendering your thoughts for God's thoughts. Yes. Because that's where the house of the enemy plays. That's where it is. It's in your thoughts. And your thoughts become so strong. See, if we don't deal with it quickly, we know the illusion, it becomes stronger and stronger. It gets harder and harder until we block God completely out. And it gets to the point where God says, okay, now you've been in such rebellion. I see there's no, no place for
for me anymore in there. So now I'm going to have to put my stamp on it and agree with you. And I'm going to have to just turn you over to what you feel. And you want to really think that you're doing right or that you're doing good. And I'm not going to be anywhere to be found anymore. Because when you get to that level of turning over, you have decided in your heart to rebel and reject the Holy Spirit. The sin that is unpardonable. And this is nothing to beat you up. This is not a going to hell message. This is a come on now, deal with your heart. Come on now, surrender. Come on now, answer the call. Come on now, answer the love that I am trying to demonstrate to you. And I'm almost done, but I have to jump to the minister side. so many things going on with pastors so many things going on with pastors and I can tell you firsthand the experience that I had I'm just tell to share this one little situation but see too much of this is going on too much of it and God is calling it out right now because no longer is he going to be dealing behind the scenes he's going to expose this because it's got to get to the level of open exposure so you can stop but see, some people gotten so comfortable in their open exposure. See, you gotta understand what reprobate looks like. You gotta understand. Or be able to discern, no, we're not to go around trying to just accuse everybody of being reprobate. No, 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 that ain't our job to be doing none of that. But I'm gonna share with you, I, I'm, this, is, this was not a reprobate situation, but this pastor decides, I mean, I'm praying in his congregation. I'm, I, I was a, a visitor, I went in, and there was uh, inside the congregation, uh, I was led with other people, we going in, and, okay, we praying, whatever, but something kept leading me. What the Spirit kept lead, leading me to this one particular area in this ministry. I was like, something's going on over there, right? So I go over there. I'm praying, warring, warring, warring. I mean, stuff. and so there are some people in there. I didn't even realize one of them was a pastor. You know, looked like a regular dude, whatever. You know, so I mean, I'm not paying them no mind. I mean, I was just warring. We was warring. We was warring in the spirit. You were there, right? Yes, warring. So this man comes to me and he he says, "I know God has a word for me through you." Yes, God called me a prophetess, but I ain't had no word. I ain't had no word. And I'm not going to front and fake like I have a word when I don't have a word just because I have some title. So I kept telling the pastor, I don't have a word for you. But he kept provoking me and pushing me and pushing me. He kept coming, I know you have a word. The, the spirit told me that you have a word for me. I said, sir, I don't have no word for you. Okay, so I've been there, you know, we dancing there, there's a little celebration or something going on inside of there, whatever. He gets me again. Now see, I don't know, when we provoke the Lord... So I go to the back, and I'm led with a few friends or whatever to go back there. So he asks me again, and now his wife is with him. And see, now God opens my eyes. Now, because he didn't provoke, not me, he provoked the Lord. Yeah. I was telling him I ain't gonna, see, God was not trying to deal with him openly. Right. There are seasons where God would deal with us in our secret place. Please be dealt with there. Yes. yes. <laughs> Please. Now, because he don't provoke the Lord, God opens my eyes prophetically. And I begin to see him. And I didn't bite my tongue. And the word of God came out. I mean, and it, this man, he was right here. His wife was standing up here. A couple of my other friends was right there. And I began to tell him. Who those people? Now, I, I even opened me up to the whole scene. I knew the people that, that was in there, what was going on over there. Yeah. I knew what he was doing to his wife. Wow. Wow. He was beating on his wife. Oh, he was like this big, gigantic lion, and she was like this little sheep. So I began to tell him how he was treating his wife and how he was on his way out the church. God was um, blowing out his hamstand. If he did not turn and repent that moment, he was out. God saw this man's heart. There was a piece of him, even in the midst of all that abuse, there was a piece of him that wanted to turn from it, but he was such bondage. But like I said, 
said all God got to see is that sea of wanting to repent. Come on, Paul. He did it. He was killing all people, Christians, and persecuting the church. And right, all that, but right. he still had to see to get yeah. it together. Right. See, God is looking at our heart and our willingness to submit to him. But see, when I begin to tell this man what he was doing to his wife, what he was doing in the ministry, oh my God. Like, he was out of complete order. His wife standing there crying. People looking like, oh my God, like, <laughs> guess what? And guess what I said? I said, stand right here. Don't go nowhere. He want this. This is what he's getting. <laughs> that man cried. He hung his head down low. I said, if you lay your, well, no, the, the Lord said, <laughs> you lay your hands on home one more time. Mm. Uh -uh. Listen, I'm trying, it was hard. That man had to get his wife and repent. And I pray to God that he stayed in that in that uh, position of repentance. And I told him why he wasn't hearing from God, why the church wasn't prospering, why the church was getting ready to be dismantled. The whole entire church. Who was I to come in here and speak that? I didn't. The Lord did. Amen? But see, God is talking to us now. And God is calling us on the forefront. He's calling us ministers. I'm telling you, it's too many of you, too many. Traveling around, sleeping with the members. Getting them pregnant. You got a spouse over there. You and or, or you got the ones that want to stay single because you want to jump from city to city, state to state, and have somebody over there. But hear what I am telling you. You wrote a check. That you cannot and not prepare to cash. God has dealt with you so long and you have rejected the voice of God. God has dealt with you openly and you have rejected the voice of God. Woe to you. It had been better if you had not been born. For scattering the sheep. It just wasn't about you. You scattered the sheep. I was a victim of it. And the sad part was that he told me, I didn't know, I didn't know. He said it as though the other ones gave him permission. They yielded to, they wanted it. I was not one, I tried to kick him through a wall. I really did. And then he asked for forgiveness for that. But see, this is the time, I'm, like I said, I'm not trying to do it, but the Lord, the Spirit is going to have his way today because right now God needs the church in position. He needs us in position. It's too many ministers, too many of you out there that is holding things in your heart against other people that's a part of your ministry. Family members. Spirit of competition. Listen, you think that ain't nothing? Oh, the spirit of competition is a big deal to God. Yes, big deal to God. Yes, oh. Greed, lust, oh, pornography. We're calling it out today because God is calling for our man to be healed in the heart. It is impossible because we've already spoken a thing for the land to be healed without the heart. The land of the heart healed first. You want this stuff to stop? There is no laws that the government, that the presidential state or whatever is going to be able to conjure up that is going to prevent you from answering to God. It's not going to solve nothing. No stimulus check is not going to solve anything. Everything that you need and everything that you could desire is in the spirit of the living God. Spirit of the living God. I had to learn that. I had to learn that. He said the pagans ask for these things. The pagans do that. The pagans ask me for houses. The pagans ask me for clothes. The pagans ask me for food. Yes. But my children, who are called by my name, he said, you will seek first the kingdom, you will do like I said, and these things will be added unto you. So stop asking him for materialistic things. Ask 
him to deal with the condition of your heart? Are you laying dormant in that bedroom? Are you looking at what everybody else is doing and pointing fingers and trying to find whatever is going wrong with somebody else? But yet, yeah, you sitting there laying in dormant like a dead man, unprofitable in the kingdom. What is going on? God is calling a real revival to spring forth. A revival in your heart of changing directions. There's a big difference of repentance and confession of sins. Don't confuse the two. We have confused the two. Where are we thinking just <coughs> confessing and just saying something, you know, oh God, I just messed up again, oh, I'm just so sorry, and then, you know, and you're going to turn around and you're going to find yourself just doing it again. Oh God, I'm so sorry, this is not another. But see, the thing is, he looks at your, you didn't have a repentant heart. He said, not everyone that said to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. But see, in order to do those things, you have to be submitted to God. In order to do the will of the Father, you've got to be submitted. He said, I want your whole heart, your whole mind, your whole body. I need every part of you. Not saying you're not going to fall. Not saying you're not going to have no little slip-ups. But he's just saying, I, I, I need your whole emotion. When you feel like you're going in that place, just say, Holy Spirit, I need you. Think of the new thing. Think of the things that are true. No, building up. Praiseworthy. Think on these things. He tells us, shift your focus. Shift your mind. Think about what you pray say before you say it. Think about what you're going to do before you do it. Yeah. I need you to do that. Because that's going to give you a chance to stop and think. Because he's provided a way of escape. In any temptation. In all areas. He said, I need you. Yield. Submit. Because there's things I need to do with you. I need you. I need you in a land. I need you to do my bidding. I need you. Don't be that one that's going to come to me and say, Lord, Lord. But I did not cast out evil spirits in your name. Didn't that... And he tells you, depart from me. I never knew you. See, I used to wonder this. I used to say, God, well, how is it possible? How is it possible if they never knew you? That means that Satan's kingdom, then if they're not a part of you, then they're a part of Satan's kingdom. Right? And you said Satan's kingdom can't cast out Satan's kingdom. So how is it possible for somebody to appear for you and say, didn't I cast out evil spirits in your name? Didn't I lay hands on the sick and they recover? All of that. How is it possible for them to have done that? Because you said the Satan of King, kingdom Satan can't cast out the Satan of kingdom. How is it possible that they're able to do that? Then the Holy Spirit gave me the revelation today. He said, these people that I said I never knew them, it's because I never knew them. He said, it was an illusion. They thought they was casting out something. They thought that they was healing sick. They was never sick. I mean, they never healed somebody. They thought that they did. Do you know anybody like that? Do you know people that always say, oh, oh they pray for somebody and they swear that they got a deliverance? And they ain't get nothing. These are the people we're talking about. People that they're saying, oh, I, 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 I just pray for her and she got healed. And ain't nothing really happened. Yeah. I'm going to prove this to you in a word. When I found this, I was over. John 9, 31, and I'm closing out. John 9, 31 says, now we know that God heareth not sinners. Did you hear that? Yeah. This is the scripture. This is not Marty. John 9, 31. Look it up for yourself. Now we know that God heareth not sinners. And he's talking about a, a sinner, the one that repeats sin, living a lifestyle of sin. But if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. Check this last one out. Since the 
world begin? Was it not heard that any man opened the eyes of one that was born blind? If this man were not of God, he could do nothing. So the Holy Spirit showed me there. He said, those people that I'm talking to in those days were, were people with that the, they were not um, real believers. They professed to be believers, but their lifestyle was living contrary to what my spirit, the fruit of my spirit. See, this is why God said, come, I need you to get in the spirit. I need you to exemplify the fruits of my spirit. I need you to show love. I need you to show people me through your kindness. I need you to show people me through your patience. I need you to show people me through your grace and mercy. I need you to show people me. I have great things. It is my pleasure to give you great things, to do great things. See, because when you abide in that place in me, when you abide under my spirit, there is protection. There is your grace. There is the provisions. There is all of the things that I promised in Psalms 91 and all the rest of my songs. Outside of that, you are wrong. Hallelujah. So will you come? Will you submit? Will you say, God, I know there are flaws in me. I know you have greater for me. I do not want to be that one, God. I don't want to be that one because I'm scared to go to hell, but because I just love you. I want to be with you, God. I want to share in these benefits in the kingdom, God, because all things belong to you and I belong to you. I want to uh, 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 represent you, God. I want to expand your kingdom, God. I want all the greatness that you provided for us, God, because you didn't provide things to be wasted. You provided so we can enjoy it that you may be glorified. Amen. 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 So we bless you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we thank you for this word that you sent forth to your people. I pray, my Lord, that they have not turned a deaf ear to what your word had to say today, God. You love us, so you're calling out. You're calling out. You're calling us to say, come out of that place. Come back to the place where they can be free, where we be liberated, where we can have all the things that you have promised. God, where all the things are provided for your people, where all the protection that they need. You are the source of all things, Father. We thank you. We magnify you that you've given us another opportunity, that you've given us another chance today to get it right, Lord. You have called your people because you need your hand to be healed. You need these unbelievers to see the greatness that you are doing through your people, Lord God. God, I thank you that their spirit is awakened today. I thank you, my Lord God, that the scales have fallen off. I thank you, Father God, that they they have humbly present themselves before you right now where you are. I pray right now where you are. Just throw up your hands and say, God, forgive me. Have mercy, God. I know, Father, that I am flawed. But, Father, true repentance is turning away. I thank you for true repentance, God, that I not just say that, please forgive me, but, God, that I would actually turn away, that my mind would actually be changed today, that, God, that I, I, I willingly submit to you. In the name of Jesus, I know I can do nothing in my own strength. So I pray that you help me this day. Help me right now, Father. Send laborers to me. Send a rain my word to me, God, because I want what you want. Help me, teach me how to truly love, to be forgiving, to be patient, to be merciful, to be kind. Help me, Father. Help me. If you have not received our Savior into your heart, the Word of God says that you are dead. And the only way you can inherit the kingdom, your position in the kingdom of God, is coming through our Savior, Jesus. Believing that he has died and he has been risen. And is seated at the right hand of our Father. If that is you, if you feel right now that you just want to give Jesus the opportunity to work within your heart. If that is you, I pray that you will lift up your hands when you are. And just say, God. Come into my heart. I believe your word. I believe you. Forgive me because I have sinned. 
I've sinned against you. I believe that Jesus died and he sits at your right hand. He died for my sins. I thank you, God, for forgiveness of my sins. For receiving me no matter how dirty I was. I thank you for your love and mercy. And I thank you and I praise you that you help me that my faith will not fail me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. Amen. I'm sorry. Somebody, I like that. I know I had to say but we'll do a series. We'll do something, another um, series soon. But I need you guys to tune in. If you are in a surrounding area of Atlanta, we are located in Alpharetta, Georgia. We are promoting the fires on social media. So please pay attention to those fires. This address is 11, what is it? 11, oh, eight, oh, eight, oh, eight, oh, Roswell. Old Roswell Road, Suite 206. In Alpharetta, Georgia, we have Apostle James Edwards coming here. Lord knows the man is on fire. The man of God is coming to this house on Friday, next Friday, and Saturday. Please tune in. If you're not around in the surrounding area, please share the information with your loved ones. Invite them to come here. I'm telling you, the man of God is... He operates in the power of God. Friday. Amen. You want to hear a special word from the Lord for yourself. That's this uh, uh, prophet. I don't, I'm not giving him all the praise and glory and all that. I praise my Lord who operates through this man. But I'm telling you, what he says in the spirit comes true. I'm telling you. Awesome. Deliverance. Friday. We're looking for deliverance and healing. In the name of Jesus. And, the, and then after that, we have another apostle that's coming. That's that I said that was Moses. Yes. <laughs> he looked like Moses, y'all. Y'all gonna be scared of him. No, I'm just kidding. He's an awesome, awesome, loving man of God. Awesome. So I'm telling you, come and be filled. Come and be delivered. Come and receive the love of the Lord. We love you. We will see you back here again next week in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.